the mood and the jet and the pay so I sleep in the money, wake up in the morning, we jumping for money. Go, run to the money, skip to the money, just get to the money. So the two clips that you guys have seen are from, I think, well, I want to say four, maybe five years at the most. Well, actually going on five years, see, 14, 13, 15, 16, 15, 18, six years ago at the most from the clips you guys seen I didn't think that was that long ago wow that that, that that's some old older clips that's from Tommy's tavern now known as used to be known as the the muddy beaver then Tommy's tavern and I know somebody else owns it, bought it, rechanged the name to, last time I checked, the Thirsty Mule. Now, I don't know where to put this clip back. I don't know what category I want to put this in. So, this clip might be left out. Because it goes with into the terms of what led to me leaving... Creekwater White, MG, The Bandit, White Fox, Wayne, whatever you want to call him. As an artist, I don't know. Whatever name he goes by now. And, like I said, this, this clip, like I said, I don't know where to put it at, so it's like left out. And... I guess this kind of goes with into being a snake and backstabbing, but at the same time also exposing the other side of it, which was going on at that time too. So the first clip was with the Columbia cartels, and you had Wayne at the time that was going by Creek Walker White. Um, I let him borrow the vest that you guys seen had on. Uh, that vest is packed downstairs. Uh, it's falling apart. It's getting old. I had that thing for a long time. I did a lot of crossbow shooting with it. Uh, just in the woods a lot. So, it's falling apart. So I had it packed downstairs. He's performing. And I remember during this time, they uh like i said no i'm going back to the coco issue with the preamp you know anybody knows what a preamp is it's for a mic you know for a microphone or even the even like the monitors even the speakers but mainly for like you know meant meant for recording uh not a preamp for a guitar i mean you could use it for that you know and, you know, yet again, Wayne wanted his preamp back. She was going on saying that was hers at the time. But to me and him, you know, we both knew about that. Uh, this was back when he stayed over on Foxwood Apartments. And back when I had the Toshiba laptop as well, which we were recording off of. And... She was lying, saying, no, I'm not home, I'm not home. But we knew you were home because you just left out your parking lot. Now, this is during the time when Wayne had that white Dodge truck still, you know. It was during that when he still had the truck. And, yet again, this is where they wanted to, to jump him still. And they tried to really call some shit out. 
but I confronted them in one video that uh, Corey got offended by. Well, don't be calling us out trying to test us when I called you out and willing to sign over music, give up shit, and then you got offended by it. Then you want to say, oh, well, he's not allowed back in Tommy's Tavern. You said the same thing about Wayne. I kept trying to tell him. He's like, no, no, he's saying the same thing about you, even though Wayne was saying, no, he didn't say nothing about me about that. No, here's the thing. He's saying it off social media. He's saying it to others. I'm letting you know what I'm hearing. Straight up and down. Because, guess what? They hired him to, they, uh, they say, you want to come perform at a show? Yeah. Then the Columbia Cartels. During that night, we got prepared because because word was going around that all the pe all the white performers that want to start some shit, so fuck all them, keep it a straight 100, right? To me, the only straight one out that whole bunch is Reese. That's it. But everyone else wanted to jump away because they figured, hey, he they figured since I was kicked out of there that he was going to be by himself so they were going to get him well little did they know a lot of people from a lot of a lot of folks from the black community came out to support the Columbia cartels right so they were there so it got overran I think a lot of people from the east so a lot of the other white people you know left some stayed a lot of the ones that wanted to jump Wayne Especially just try to chill out back until it was time for them to perform. Well, I was there at Tommy's Tavern. I was sitting, I was outside in Wayne's truck, seat pulled back, laid back. I had some homemade shanks with me because, you know, Wayne was texting me. The plan was, was to get me on stage for a hype man as well. You know, for a hype man, you know. This, you know. He, he was texting me, he's like, I'm going to see if they're there. If they're not, I'm going to have you come inside, come on stage as a hype man. You performing with us. They have to let you on. You know. But he's like, okay, they're there, so just stay in. But the plan was, was like, hey, they were going to try to get you in out outside or inside the building, wherever it was. Maybe even after the performance hours, at the most. So, I was waiting on word or something to pop off to where, and even the Columbia cartels know because we were all at Wayne's place at the time anyways. Now, during this performance, this was at the trailer, which Wayne stayed in, over on a Woodland Trailer Park. So, I forgot to throw that in. So, we were there that time, told them what the plan was. So, just in case something popped off in there, why there are people in. Or even after, even in the middle, somebody was supposed to come and get me. And I was going to go in and take care of business. So a lot of the people that wanted to get at him, their lives were at stake that night. Straight up and down by me. I was going to kill one of y'all motherfuckers. Real talk. So I was there. Now, going back to this other clip that you guys seen... You guys see the guy in the red shirt, the hat with the bandana pull over face? That was me. Yet again, this is still during the time where, oh, you can't come in Tommy's Tavern because I called him out for trying to get at Wayne like that, for trying to set him up. So I went in there and I performed. I played the guitar as a guy playing the guitar. I was that guy playing the guitar. So guess what? I performed at your shit. Now it's almost six years later, or six years now, Good luck trying to file for private uh, property trespassing because it's old. It ain't going to fall through in court. And the plan was, was just, okay, let me play, do, 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 get this session over and leave. Like, that was the deal as well. So I did that. But leading into this is why I think it's some snake stuff because I still see that you're still friends with them. She still has some communication with Corey. After all the stuff that we've been through with that. I feel like that's some snake stuff. Like that's some 
backstabbing snake stuff that lets me know that's also Two-Face. So you were down with him from the get-go, which made me think if I stuck around a little bit longer, that would have been a setup to try to get me drunk. And that wouldn't have ended well for that side. Not for me, because I would have took care of some shit if that were to happen. Your guys' lives would have been straight up ended. I'm not the one to fuck with on that. That's not that. That's how I see it. Is that if I would have stayed longer, there would have been a setup with me, which would involve them and Wayne trying to get me. Because I still, because you were still to me, you still, you were still talking to him behind my back, even though I put myself on the front line for you, making sure nothing happened for you. So them clips, they have a lot of history behind them. Real talk. But. In the end, I feel like, man, that was some snake stuff because you still wow. want to talk and be cool with the people that wanted to hurt you and wanted to be two-faced about it with me, the person that tried to, the person that protected you, make sure nothing happened. So, that's, so, like I said, this video might be left out because I don't know where to fit it, but it's a good bonus clip video, and I'm out. Okay, so here's the proof that a lot of you really wanted to say, hey, a lot of the stuff, you know, that we know of with Wayne and stuff is conflate, it is fake. A lot of his uh, shows and you know, a lot of uh, within his parties are completely fake. His bookings within the shows that I'm going to be doing this, the ones that you see that were advertised before but never shown... And when getting called out about, it, you know, going back to the little white situation, keeping it real, you know, little white and his cousin got in trouble for booking fake shows, ripping off venue spots. If I remember correctly, but you got rid of the video that she's like, hey, the show at the whatever's canceled with the little white show. It was a scam. Yeah, they were scamming people. Little White can't move, he ain't relevant out here. His music might be... His music ain't even popping, so his shit ain't relevant. He can't get off the Juicy J's label. Hypnotize mind, Juicy J has his artists starving. A lot of them that you see that are starving, a lot of them are coming up with the money what they can to file for bankruptcy and to sell the personal stuff to say, hey, let's come up with the money. Let me get out of this contract. And that's why they go... To Yellow Wolf stuff, but even Yellow Wolf, and I had a conversation with a friend of mine, yeah. The dude's a fucking poser. Okay? Can't fuck with this shit. You're ma you're really false advertising your shows as hip hop rap shows when you're performing country. And then that's the thing that Wayne is doing. Now, here he has a show announced Alienated Bash on April twentieth, which is this weekend. But I was out earlier walking near that way, and I ran across somebody that were handing out flyers. Advertising for a party, which is on the 22nd, the 21st. Talked a little bit about this, not, not too much. The, the guy was, he seemed weird to me. Nothing came up at all about your party at all because there's something else going on in it and it's not you and you're definitely not having anything up on the weekend so you're definitely doing a fake false advertisement show however you might be going to this just to show up to get a good time in and i'm going to show you guys this this is this is what was handed out today i'm going to let you guys look at this and i'm, I'm going to read it to you to understand you know Hotman Entertainment and Old Stockyard End presents the best party album released and friend showcase. It means they're showcasing somebody right now to get them out there. This seems like a little bit of a rock type of thing, not not really hip hop. And the guy that handed it out, he look he looked kind of like Shaggy from the Scooby Doo a little bit, mixed with somebody who we know used to call himself Rabbit or. Real name, Kyle Johnson. He had like a blue lumber uh, lumberjack jacket on, a gray type of vest, a type of deal. You know, who handed out 
And he was handing these out over at the uh, a gas station down there along the way and everything like that. And this happens, you know, on April 20th with, you know, 813 S Garden Street, free shots. Uh, show starts at 9. I'm going to let you guys look at this again. And yet again, some of the conversations were was like, no, there's nothing happening upon the 20th. Something else is going on. It doesn't involve Wayne. And he knows about the bandit. Well, he heard of the party and shit. But your shit ain't honestly going on. So it goes to show, yet again, you're going back to doing some of the fake. Fake shit is the reason why, you know, my business, I will never fuck with you again with the business aspect of getting shows booked. So, I ended up getting this. This is, you know, I'm not going to it. It's, this is on some bullshit. You know, I don't fuck with uh, the country shit. I don't fuck really with the rock shit like that. Especially when you want to mix it in with rap or whatever and really advertise some shit and say, hey, I'm blah, blah, blah. Sucker shit, okay? This is just bullshit. Is what you're on. You know, I'm not really fucking with it. I, I would never want to be booked for a show for you. I, I would never want to be even an opener for you, though. I'm not going back to the bullshit. Let's keep it real. But this just goes to show, bro, you really have nothing really going on. You already had your party. You're not getting booked at, again for another event. you got to let these people do it. So it's obvious that your shit ain't going on. Not this weekend, no. I'm calling it out. And proof right here, like I said, the guy that handed it out, he looked like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. He looked like Shaggy, okay, from Scooby-Doo, okay? He looked like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. I don't know what else to put it. And... The th and like and like and, and and here's the thing. If you take a look at most of some of my, my videos, and I found a little bit more footage of me doing doing some performances. If you take a look, yeah, I've done a few shows. I don't, I don't have a lot underneath my belt, but 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 it's enough to say, hey, I've done some things. And there were some some shows that. I may have done that weren't captured, that weren't recorded, and if they were, I, I didn't know, I can't find them. Just like, I probably got some old VHS tapes when I was in a dance group, performing. So yeah, I got something on me, to say, hey, in the show, you know, th this is my thing, what I do. Followed up by some of your footage where you're making it seem like, oh, I never performed at the Stockyard Inn before. When clearly you have. If you guys go on his old IG page, okay? If you guys go on his old IG page, White Fox, or the official White Fox, or something like that. Rather that or another. And, and matter of fact, I'll just post the pictures at the end of this video. To show you guys, he performed there, and if you guys take a look at how the stage looks, and then go back to the, one of the previous videos from his performances just past, it will show to say, hey, oh, well you performed there before, and matter of fact, I'll even record a little bit of the footage for that to put it in this video, along with my footage when I performed there, to show that you performed there. You know, going back, I also feel like you were just left out and completely jealous of the business that went on about five years ago and now five years later. With me and Jay, who got the business done, who did, who done, who, who we got it done in like five or ten minutes, and you opened his mouth to him, and then I didn't hear from him since, then the show didn't go through, and then it ended up closing down. Because you opened your mouth and all he wanted to know was we wanted our pictures up on the flyer. That's all he wanted to know. So you don't make it seem like you didn't perform there before. You clearly did. Matter of fact, we done our first little, you know, like, like, uh, uh, I can't, I can't think of the band's name. They're, they're your parents, friends. The dude, it's an older guy, you know what I'm talking about. He has his own band. Scotty Martin. Scotty Martin band. They were generous enough to say, hey, I'm going to let you two boys on here to do this song that you guys want to do. And we did. 
we don't have nothing captured for that, obviously, but don't make it seem like you didn't perform here before when you clearly have. And going back yet again, it looks like you're going back with your bullshit, saying, hey, this is something I'm doing, but, but you're not, because I just showed the damn flyer that was handed out to me by a guy that looked like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, looked like a mixture of Kyle Johnson, he had a blue lumber jacket on with a vest, gave off a weird vibe. I think the guy was actually up on drugs from what it looks like and, and shit, you know, whatever, but miss me with the bullshit. Miss me with the bullshit because, yet again, you always do this. You get on the right path. Because I'm not hating on you for the fucking shows, but you, when you get on the right path, then you start doing the fuck shit again. And you wonder why you got a bad reputation. And before you say shit, before anybody say shit, why don't you do more shows? You got to understand something. I had a, had a friend came by yesterday, and we talked. We hadn't talked for a while. He's trying to be involved with music. We chopped it up. You guys got to understand something. This is Middle Tennessee. One of the most racist parts up in the South Coast. It's owned by the Klan. Owned by some cons government conspiracy theories within the state, which I won't really get into. That that's another time. But I've, and the reason why I say this, if you look who Columbia's next door neighbors, it's Pulaski. Any anybody knows about Pulaski, you know that's where the KKK first started at. We're people of color. I'm color, but this is really a white man's land. In the, in, the, in the middle of Tennessee, and they're not about, you know, this was, was built off country music and blues, okay? They're not about a person of color with rap, hip-hop, pop music. Those listening to my music knows that it's a mixture. I have, you know, um, culture in my music that goes with, you hear that rap, you get the snap in between, you get, you get the good rhythm shit, you know? Anybody listen to my music, you know what, what I do and what I give. The same thing with these lot of artists down here. There's no really clubs really down here to perform. The Sky Bar ain't doing good. You know, there was a talk about that. And I know some people that may work there want or are going to try to defend and seem like some other shit. Like, hey, this isn't what's going on. Fuck what everybody else is saying. Well, the people know. It's the truth. It's out there. And I'm hearing this from my OG. E, okay? A lot of shows only go down there, stripper shows. Some of the artists that did perform, they're saying the same thing. Because they're tied down to 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 that club as their performing artist. Who's managing them through someone else that's involved with that business. To make sure they can't move or have the freedom to negotiate their own shit. So that's why they ain't been doing nothing. That's why a lot of the artists down here, they talk that boss talk. A good, a good talk, a good boss talk if on record, but in real life, they ain't got the backbone to stand up and say, hey, I'm not selling my studio spot, but you do anyways, and that's why you see a lot of these rock and country studios popping up, a lot of these biker, old white people bars and shit, you know, they're not about people of color, they don't want that there, that's not the traction that they want, the same thing up in Nashville, Nashville ain't even doing it no more, they're not about, they don't, uh, they don't attend to the hip-hop culture no more. That's not what they want. That's not the crowd that they want. It's like, no, we're not attending to this. That's why a lot of them are also getting bought out. It's good boss talk, but at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's just fucking talk. You know, it's no boss actions on your end. The same thing with Clarksville. Because you, I'm, I used to be seeing people all the time hearing about these shows and advertisements post up. Up there, it's not like that. You hear more about the country and rock stuff, and now Lawrenceburg is practically dead. <laughs> That's all it is. Is there's nothing there now. So why? And and because of that, you know, is yeah, a lot of what I do and several others. Why we can't get booked? Trying to get out of state. That's costing more money. Because you got to worry about gas, food, where you're going to stay, plus money to put back into the next show at the next venue spot. 
because there's two different pays. Your front pay, what you get when you show up, and then your back pay after the show, which is the people that pay to get in, right? Or the CD pay. I'm getting sick. Right? Then you, got, then, then you have to have CDs made up constantly and keep you stock, and, and that costs money. So it's hard for a lot of us who do the actual street music the people of color, they can't get booked down here. They're not about it. But you false advertisement, your shows, and, and I think that's why you got in trouble. That's why you got in trouble the first place, because you said, this is a rap show, whatever, but you're performing country, no one showed up, or got out. You know, you paint your own bad reputation by how you do things on your actions. Now that you're trying to get booked here and there, you got to think smarter, like, hey, People are really listening to your music and questions like, you, you don't do rap. This is country. This is rock. You have a little bit of a band and have that country rocky sound with that music. Yeah, they're going to book you down here. And that's the only reason why you're getting booked. Because you're doing country music. But online, what you're also doing is considered clickbait. Clickbait music, which is now getting to the point where they're starting to crack down on that. But if you keep, but you said you're looking for rappers, you're looking for artists, where's all my rap hip hop artists here in Colombia? I hate to tell you this, we don't fuck with you. Because you're going back to the bullshit. Again, you're going right back into this bullshit of saying, hey, let me false advertisement this. I'm not looking for rappers. But once this, well, it's the show day, it says, hey, false advertisement, it's really country. Can't, can't be doing that shit, okay? But I'm going to show you guys the pictures. Yeah, he had performed at Stocker and Perform. He, had, uh, he has performed there before in the past. This ain't his first time. Plus the video of me when I performed there, and you guys... And I'm also gonna find. I'm also gonna get some little bit of clips of the video when he performed for his release party for the House of Blues. And I want you guys to look at the background and you say, "Whoa, that's the same place five years ago when they performed there." So it's not his first time. So yeah, you don't have nothing going on this weekend from April twentieth. 21st. Okay, yet again another false show. Just just take a look at at the background and pay attention. Just take a look at the background. Okay. This is from his release party. Just take a look at the background. Okay. Pause right here. Okay, before before I press play, just just take a look at the background. This is the performance at the Stockyard Inn five years ago. The same stage, same same background, and everything. Just got to take a look. You see, like like from the previous video, and I'll even go on his old Instagram page and show you guys he performed there before, and it's not his first time. I'll find it. Thank 